Hey everyone, it's Fox from ModelmakingGuru.com here. Hello, hello and welcome. And apologies for this very, very late and overdue episode of my build of the Back to the Future DeLorean time machine from Fan Home. Yes, if you remember about six, seven months ago, I did the first pack of this and filmed issues one and two and then nothing. You just didn't hear a thing from me after that on it. My apologies, the packs have been turning up each month, but real life got in the way. So today's going to be a very quick show. It's not going to be the usual buildy-buildy type footage show, because I've got six packs to get through, plus I've got lots of other stuff queuing up to be filmed as well. So today we're just going to do a quick catch-up, so I'll do each pack off camera, and then I'll show you what I've built. And then I'll do the next pack off camera, and I'll show you what I've built. So we'll just catch up. But before we crack on, if you don't know what this is, it is a part work from my very good friends at Fan Home. It's a one eight scale model of the DeLorean time machine from the Back to the Future movies. Over the course of the project, you get a pack each month with five magazines in and all the bits. You put it all together, and at the end of the whole part work, you've got this beautiful, enormous, very heavy model of the vehicle. So that's what it is. Now, I do have to explain, as I always do with these things, that Fan Home are providing this to me free of charge at no cost to me. So a big, massive thank you to them. I'm not paying for this. They don't have any say in the creative process, though. What I tell you is what I tell you. So if I don't like something, I'll tell you. If I like it, I'll tell you. But they do send this to me free of charge. Now, very quickly, I think I mentioned this in the last episode, but if you started this part work when it was Eagle Moss, because if you note, it does say Eagle Moss on it, and all the magazines are branded with Eagle Moss. This was an Eagle Moss part work before Eagle Moss went bust, bankrupt, died, had a fall and couldn't get back up, and then were taken to go and live on the farm with other part work companies who'd retired and fallen over and couldn't get up. So if you started this part with Eagle Moss and you were never able to finish it, you should have been contacted by Fanham at some point in the last six to 12 months to let you know that you can carry on. But if you've not been, use the links below this video. There's links for Fanham and stuff. Click on them, go and contact them because you can actually carry on from where you left off. They've got stuff in place for people that started this part work with Fan Home. They'll, I think, if I remember rightly, they get your, your subscription details from you and then they take it from there because they've taken it over. It's exactly the same part work. They've taken this over to keep it alive. So if you if you did start this with Eagle Moss, get in touch with Fan Home is what I'm saying. I don't know all the details. Don't take anything I'm saying as gospel, but do get in touch with them if you were never able to finish this part work because it still exists. Anyway, we're going to crack on today with issues three to six, which is pack two. It's a pack one then. And then I'll get everything ready. I'll go and do all the buildy buildy, whatever that might be. And then when we come back, we'll have a look at what I've actually done. Back in a minute. Pack two is now done. Now this part and this part here, these are from pack one, issues one and two. I just thought I'd get them out so you can see how much we've done so far. So... We are up to here with pack two issues, three, four, five, and six. We have built a wheel, two suspension arms for the front, and the Mr. Fusion reactor. I've got to say so far my opinion of this part work, and it's very early days, but there's been a few issues with this pack, and it's like, mm. But, you know, it's got plenty more issues to redeem itself. I'm used to Diagostini stuff, and, and so we'll see how it goes. Anyway. We built the wheel, uh, which goes together beautifully easy, dead simple, that in there, screw that in there, bang, 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 done. The only thing is, I pinged off the hub and it disappeared, so there should be a hub in the middle there that covers up the eventual screw that will hold that onto the suspension. Yeah, it's gone. So I've had to order a new issue three, just for that central hub bit. Yeah, there was much swearing. I, I was on the floor, I was emptying boxes. I'll find it as soon as this other copy of issue three turns up and I put it in there. It, I'll find it. Yes. We built the two front suspension arms, go together like a dream, really nice. I'm not really sure how the suspension is going to work because I don't really see any play in this at all. The, that's screwed in there and there's a big jonky spring, but it, I don't see how it's going to... I mean, I'm sure I'll figure it out when it's in place and in situ, but yeah, I don't know how it's going to work. But you do have this rather nice uh, mechanism there. Mechani I said that wrong. Mechanism. Mechanism. Me this gadget here. Uh, where the wheel can flop down so that when you've got the, the wheel screwed into place, driving, 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 into flight mode, duh, duh, duh. there you go, how cool is that? Some people have said they've had breakages on these parts, but I'm not going to be hooning it around like an idiot. I'm going to be very gentle with it, so hopefully nothing will break. It's got a magnet to hold it in place there, so hopefully that won't break on me. If it does, I don't know what I'll do. And we built the Mr. Fusion as well. Now I have to say, comparing it to some of my Diagostina builds, quality of this like you know the quality of the plastic components and the, you know how nice they are and clean and it's not it's not brilliant i mean there's mold lines and there's nubs and that bit's printed nicely but 
it's a bit mm, i can only assume it's quite an old part work this because it's not the best of the world but it's fine it's fine it's just mm, it's a bit you know you've got the three screws holding it together there and they've done nothing to cover that up really okay yes anyway so we put this together i did have some issues with this uh, first and foremost the two little screws that that hold the springs in place for this latch that holds the Mr. Fusion lid in place. Uh, one of them picked that well, the spring pinged off into oblivion, a bit like the hubcap for the wheel. So that's gone, that's lost. But luckily, the second spring is on perfectly and didn't go away. So that's actually in place. One spring only, and it, it works. It's, it doesn't actually do anything anyway. It just stops that pinging off. So it's fine. But the two spirit the two screws that hold it in place, DP screws. I didn't get any DP screws. You're supposed to get a pack of six in this issue. I didn't get any. I just got A, P and C, P. So that was a bit rubbish. So I had to go into my stash of screws from other part works. I mean, you do part works. Keep them all organised. Keep all your screws organised as the build's going on in little stashes. And then when you finish the build, just dump them all into a big pot. Because trust me, this is when they come in handy. I didn't have any DP screws and they're quite small. So I had to go and fish out a few screws from my, my stash. And I found a couple that work fine. Also, when you put this bit together... Now, this bit will always fall out, by the way. It never stays in place. You're supposed to fix the clear part in with two CP screws. They won't fit. They're just too small. They don't fit in the plastic pin underneath this clear part. They'll get stuck in the clear part because they're a bit too fat, but they won't grip onto the bit underneath because they're too thin. So forget that. Just use two of the spare AP screws you get when you put this together. You have loads of AP screws left over. So use two of the spare AP screws. And this is supposed to lock into place, but don't worry, it's going to fall out all the time. It's not going to stay in place, but it's not the end of the world. I suppose you could always glue it if you wanted to, but I assume it's supposed to come off so you can look inside. I don't know what... I'm assuming this lights up and there's a clear bit. I, I have no idea. We'll figure it out as we go along. So, yeah, so I did have an issue with not getting a pack of screws. That was a bit... That was a bit pants, but hey, we got there in the end. So that is issues three, four, five, and six, pack two. Let's crack on with the next pack. And that's pack three, issues seven to 11 done. Dead straightforward, dead simple. Couple of things that I'll point out to you that you have to watch for, but other than that, nothing too complicated. We've started construction of the chassis. We've got the front steering rack, as far as I can tell, fully installed. And the front suspension, again, as far as I can tell, fully installed. We've just started on the rear suspension here to get that in place. Nothing really to watch out for. Very simple construction on the steering rack. It's about as complex, well, it's less complex than the Dodge Charger was, and it's maybe a little bit more fiddly. In fact, maybe not even as fiddly as the GT40. It's quite simple. Things to watch out for. First of all, the front wheels. This may just be me, but oh, well, there's the first thing. As you can see, the wheels, the magnets are all right, but they don't tend to grip very well. They do easily flop down. Now, if you've got it on a shelf, you know, on a shelf like this on its wheels, that's not going to be a problem. But it's just so you know, when you're building it and working on it later on, these are going to tend to flop down. You could, if you wanted to, I suppose, replace one of the magnets, um, but I'm not going to do that. When this is finished, it's going to sit on a shelf. So it's, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, the steering rack was very simple to build. There are two things I want to point out to you, though. Now, both these things I'm going to show you seem to be limitations of the instructions, the 3D renders in the instructions. They're not always clear. And I have to add as well, in some places, they don't actually match reality. On the underside of the uh, few Mr. Fusion here, the actual 3D render shows a couple of extra big sticky up tubes that aren't there. And there's a couple of times when you look at components in the instructions, they don't match what you're looking at on this piece of this steering system here there's a little sort of embossed pit around that screw hole that's not on the instructions and one thing that's not clear on the instructions is this bar here which way round it goes i've got it so it goes along and then points up and then goes flat to the screw point i'm assuming that's the right way around i looked at it for a long time and thought i think that's the way it's showing it's just because it doesn't show any the angle they've got it doesn't show whether it's pointing up or down so it's not very clear the other bit i wanted to point out where the instructions are not clear are these two wishbones at the back there's one here and there's one over here you see there's a little nodule on the end of the arm there that doesn't appear in the instruction graphic at all it's not clear whether it's underneath here and you can't see it or whether it's inside there and that's the way it's supposed to go and you can't see it it's not mentioned in the words at all uh, now I've actually built it this way with it sticking out that because I wasn't sure 
which way around this is supposed to go. I consulted as many different people's builds as I could. I've got my friend over at Gross Models, Chris. He's done this build and he put it the other way around, then put it back this way around. I've seen other builders do similar. It seems to be so far the general consensus is that this little nodule goes on the outside because this is a, a detent, a stop for when the wheel comes down, it stops it going too far, as far as I can tell. Uh, if you put it the other way around, so this little nodule's in here, it stops this bar moving very far that way. I don't know if that will be a problem when you come to assemble the rest of the suspension system. The other thing as well, it does seem to be that the hole inside this end, there's a, there's a little hole at that end, is smaller than this one. Uh, because I did read from four or five years ago, people having trouble getting the screw into this end to build the rest of the suspension system. Um, but when I watched my friend Chris at Gross Models do it, he just put the screw straight through. So it may well be that this is the right way and those other people had it the wrong way. So I'm going to stake my claim. I put my money down on this way around. It might be wrong. I may have to take it all back apart again if it all turns horribly wrong later on. But based on other people's bills that I've looked, I think it's this way. Again, the instructions are not very clear at all. But other than that, everything else went together perfectly well. No problems with this. So now let's get on with the next pack, which is issues 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. And this is what we have at the end of issue 16, pack four, issues 12 to 16. And we've got all the wheels on. Yes, it's so nice. Like the Dodge, I had just two wheels on the front for months and it was a pain trying to put it on the shelf, but not have it resting on the wheels. It's nice to have the all four wheels on so quickly. Uh, all went together really well. Actually, not hard at all. No major difficulties. We've got the two rear wheels attached now. They've got their suspension built in and they've got the flippy floppy option. We've started working on the transmission. Very important information to give you about that. And we built, I assume, their drive shafts for two of the wheels. We've built them two things. Now, like I said, the assembly was fine. No problem. The instructions, there were some major problems with the instructions. I'll move the camera and I'll explain. OK, so the first thing you're going to want to watch out for, and again, this is the instructions that are the problem, not the actual physical building, is when you're building this rear suspension system and the shock absorber. I'll get my torch on it because it's hard to see. Uh, what you have to do is basically have a screw IM. And it's an IM screw. It's a big, long screw and it threads through all these bits. It, there's the shock absorber here. It threads through the end of that. There's a loop. Then there's a loop on the back of this uh, wishbone. Then there's a loop on the back of the brake disc. Then there's a loop on the on this, this wishbone here. Then the other side of the loop on the brake disc and then the end piece, which is on the back of this arm. It needs to thread through all of those. Now, it's not a problem if you did, like I said, and you put that little nodule on this on this bar here at this end, it fits like a glove. It's perfect. The problem comes in the in issue 12. It says take this shock absorber and put the IM screw in the end of it. And then it shows you assembling the wheel onto here and misses this off the diagram as if you've not got the shock absorber there. And then at the end of it, it shows it on there. So it's a bit it misses that out. So if you did, I have to think, look at it twice and think, hang on, where does the shock absorber go? So it needs to be the shock absorber first and then the other bits and it all lines up. In issue 14, it's even worse. It doesn't even have the bit where it tells you to put the screw in the end of this shock absorber. So keep that in mind. The imagery, the imagery and artwork, it's missing stuff out. It's missing out a little step. So you need to make sure you've got that shock absorber there as part of this setup. Now, the second problem is actually a lot worse. The magazine actually has completely the wrong instructions and completely the wrong parts. Yeah, basically the instructions show that you get these parts in pack 16. That one, two halves of transmission case, oil pump housing, the lower pan, two seals, two axle mounts and a whole bunch of screws. You don't get any of that. What you get is you get two completely different halves, an ending that looks totally different. You don't get a lower pan and you get the rest of it because this is an automatic gearbox. This is what you actually make. A manual transmission. It's completely different. That looks nothing like that. Now this was a problem with the original Eagle Moss release. Um, I've had to do a bit of research but basically when you start doing issue 16 you'd be like attach this piece here and you'd be like I don't have that piece. I don't have this oil pan either uh, and you don't know what to do. If you think you've got parts missing but you don't. You're actually building the manual gearbox. And apparently the, the actual filming car, the real car, had a manual gearbox. But for some reason in this part work, they gave him uh, an automatic transmission and then they changed it. So I think some people got this load of stuff and some people got the, the manual transmission. I assume 
Fan Home now has sorted it out, so they're sending out the correct transmission, but it's still got the incorrect instructions. Now, it's not Fan Home's fault. It, it's This is an Eagle Moss problem. They made these instructions. It's just never been changed, and Fan Home may not have even been aware of it, or at least they've not got around to updating the magazines or anything yet. It, it may not even be possible for them to do that. It may be in the future they start uh, including a little note saying, by the way, these instructions are garbage. Please just build whatever you've got. So, yeah, if you're getting confused and think you've got the parts missing, you haven't. You've got the bits to make the manual gearbox. Now, I have done my researches, as always. Uh, it seems that some people have said that we have build this anyway and we'll get some other bits later on uh, to make up for this. Uh, other people have just gone ahead and built it and it, have just said, it just build this. This is the right bit. So I don't really know what's going to happen in future issues, but we've got the parts to build the manual gearbox, the manual transmission. So just build this. It's basically very similar. You've got two halves, an end piece here, and then you've got those two bits there. All you do is you screw the end piece onto one half of the transmission case. You then attach these two sides. These are exactly the same as the instructions. So you can build those two little bits and stick them in and screw them in the same. And then you just screw it together. So yeah, so that's weird. It's, I'm assuming this is something Fan Home might correct eventually. But I have to say, the number of issues I've had so far with the instructions in the magazine, coming off like Diagostini and Fan Home, where the instructions are like perfectly crystal clear, I've had a handful of issues in just the first few issues where it's incorrect. It's like, hmm, I'm not surprised Eagle Moss went out of business. This is the kind of thing they were doing. I'm not surprised they went out of business. You know what I mean? Ooh. Mm. Anyway, yes. So... Be aware, you might get this, if you get the, the one that matches the magazine, then I don't know what the case is for that either, because I don't actually know which is the right one. But yes, so if you get confused issue 16, just build what you've got. I'm sure we'll find out in the future what the actual fact is. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go and crack on with the next pack. And the next update, we have our engine. Yeah, I don't know if it's completed yet. We're just, we've got, got to the point where we stop making the engine. Now I did go for more than one pack. I went from issue 17 all the way to issue 23. So it's a bit more than one pack. But it's because it was all dealing with the engine. I thought I might as well get the whole thing built and then come back to you. Uh, it went together really well. A couple of, well, three things you need to be aware of. Two or three things. First of all, when you get to adding these two bits on the end, keep in mind again that you're building, hopefully you've got the bits for this manual transmission and these bits are adapted to fit that part of the transmission. In the magazine, it shows the automatic transmission and has completely different parts on the end. So don't panic again when it doesn't match the artwork in the magazine, you've got the right bits. Hopefully we'll continue to get the right bits all the way through this. And although the magazine may not be correct, we won't have to take all this apart again later on to adapt it for some other parts. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So that's gone together. Things you need to know. First of all, you've got the dipstick there. It just sits in a little hole at the bottom. I do recommend when you've finished everything else, little tiny tuts of super glue on the end just to hold it in place because it will come out every five seconds with the slightest provocation. So you might want a little touch of super glue on there. You can if you want to when you put these tubes and pipes on. It might be worth using a tiny touch of super glue on each end, on each little bit that they attach to, just to hold them in place. I haven't done that yet because I don't know if I'll need to pop them off again in the future. And also there's a very good reason why you don't want to glue them. But when you're sure there's nothing else to go on there, you could probably glue them on. Third thing, on this part here, if I can show you, this part here, uh, where is it? Down here, this bit that sticks up here. There's two little nozzle, nodules, one there and one at the bottom. This hose from here goes onto that bottom hose there on that bottom little nodule. Now in the instructions, it tells you to put it on the top nodule, but there's also a photograph of the actual engine in the magazine and the pipe going from the top nodule comes over here somewhere and the pipe going to this component goes from the bottom. So it might be the wrong way around. I might have to swap it back again. I haven't glued it in place, but it looks like this is supposed to go on the bottom nodule, which is slightly bigger. The magazine does show this nodule as the biggest one, but it's actually at the bottom. And be careful, those are very easily bent and snapped. Same with these two bits here. They're very easily bent, so be careful when you're installing those. Now, the major problem I had with this is this plate at the top that the rocker covers sit on. It's one big plate and it clunks down with two big screws, and I think they're DM screws. The problem you'll have is those screws aren't long enough. Uh, they go through uh, a little tube. They go through a little tube 
I can't do it with my hands, but they go through a little tube and then there's a tube at the bottom of the engine that they also go into and they're supposed to screw through the tube in the cover and then keep going down into the tube at the bottom and hold it in place. They don't. They, they won't. They're not long enough. I couldn't get any of the other screws that, that I had in my spares box for this project, for this part work, to fit. So I had to go into my big stash of screws and I had to get a couple of screws from my Dodge Charger build. And I don't know what they were. They were big, long silver ones with a flange on the end. I don't know what they were. They might have been FM, I think. I don't know. But they were the only screw. You might be able to see down there. There's a little silver headed screw down there. Maybe you can see that. I don't know. There's two of them with the flange on. They just about... Uh, they're, they're slightly thicker than the, the ones you get with this part work and they're long enough to just grip that tube at the bottom. Now it's not a very tight fit at all. It is like you can see it's wobbly and this doesn't fit very well together at all. I, I, I couldn't get this to lock down any further than that but I suspect it doesn't really matter too much. It's on there. I'm not going to get too handy with it. It's still a bit wobbly. But as long, those screws are down as far as I can get them, even with a touch of oil to sort of smooth their passage. They're down as far as I can get them in. And it's hard to get down there with the screwdriver anyway. So you might not have a problem with it, but if you do, and you find this top cover just keeps coming off all the time, just have a look through your collection of screws or, you know, go and get some screws, find some somewhere that are slightly longer and slightly fatter. Uh, than the screws that you're supposed to use. You'll see the metal tube in the bottom. If you find a screw that fits into that nice and tightly, you should be fine. The the, the screws that you're supposed to use, apart from not being long enough, they're also not quite fat enough. So they, it doesn't. It just kind of sits in the tube. It doesn't lock onto it. So it wasn't holding them in place. So yeah, you might need to hunt around for screws if you have any problems. It might work perfectly for you. It might all fit. This part might be slightly out of shape and that's why I'm having trouble. It could just be slight warping of this metal component. I don't know. All I'm hoping is that the fact it's a little bit loose and not quite flush there, I'm just hoping that's not a major problem and it doesn't cause any issues later on. So that is the engine done. I need to then crack on with the rest of this pack, which I think is just issue 24. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll come back when we've done the next bunch of it. I'm probably not going to work pack by pack now because I've gone out of sequence. So I'll just come back when we've got the next bunch of stuff done. I think the next step is actually installing this onto the chassis, not chassis chassis. Let's go and find out how that works. Oh, I forgot before we go to that, we've had some freebies and I meant to mention them to you. First of all, in all these issues that we've just covered, we got not one, not two, but three hardback folders to put your magazines in. Now I'm quite surprised by this because I've done these part works before and you generally get one or you might get two, but you're supposed to buy all the extra ones. Like for the X-Wing I had um, two binders I think and then all the other magazines just flopping about because I didn't I didn't get the extras so we've had three of these which is quite nice we got this lovely set of snub nose tweezers which were perfectly timed for doing all the rubber tubes I mean I've got a million pairs of tweezers around this workbench uh, but pointing normal tweezers you can end up damaging the little tubes because they jab in and they, they rip it these are great because they're just perfectly designed for putting those little plastic tubes onto the little nipples and we also got this very nice and very bright blue Exploded Diagram DeLorean t-shirt, which is very nice. It's not exactly the highest quality print, but it's a freebie, so you can't complain. It's quite a nice photograph of the DeLorean and all the exploded bits out. And it's actually, what size is that? That is a large, which is a bit too small for me because I'm more of an extra large, unfortunately. I'm old man, I've got expansion joints that shouldn't be there, so. But Mama Wolf might wear this. She's currently wearing my Iron Man one and my X-Wing one and my Millennium Falcon one. So <laughs> she's got a collection of part work t-shirts. See, we get that as well. Right, anyway, shut up, folks. Let's get on with the building. Okay, final update for this video. I've done issues 24 to 31. That's it. Now my stash is up to date. I've got rid of the backlog. I can now sit back and put this back away in the box until the next lot turns up uh, in a month's time. And then I can just film that as a regular, normal, watch me building it episode rather than this kind of quick catch up episode. So that's up to date. What have I done in those issues 24 to 31? I have completed the engine. Well, at least for now, I assume it's completed. There was a bit more work to do on the engine, adding the drive belts and things like that, and the pulleys. Uh, it's been mounted into the chassis. We've got the floor pan in, radiators gone in, and on the other side, we've got a bit of the armour here on the wheel arches that protect all that stuff under there. And we've got the water cooling pipe system that goes around to the radiator. That's all installed as well. So I'll just put that back again. It's getting a bit heavy now. 
So there wasn't actually a lot of stuff to do in those last few issues. It was just bits and bobs basically getting it all installed no real issues no real problems that i need to alert you about i did decide in the end to super glue the ht leads to the engine block just at this end i put a little tiny dot of super, of super glue or ca glue on the little plastic nipple and then just drop the tube onto it and it just holds it in place because they kept coming off every time i moved it and it was a pain in the bum so i've done that they're not glued here so if I do need to take this top part off for any reason, I can undo the leads there and they can flop around. It's absolutely no problem. I did also find with the drive belts, uh, this drive belt here, this long one, that's absolutely fine. This other one that goes on this side of the engine, it's too big. They're both the same size, but this one should be smaller because it's got smaller distance to go. It's too big, so it flops loosely. So what I had to do was twist it round and double it over itself, which is not accurate for how a car actually works. It, it makes no sense at all in real engineering terms, but you're not going to be able to really see it. And it also stops it falling off and flopping about. So eh, I'll have a look around and if I ever find like a slightly smaller one of these rubber bands, I can stick that on instead. But it doesn't really matter. It's not the end of the world. I did go back in and retighten the top cover of the engine block there. Remember I was saying it was very loose with the screws. I just did a bit more work on it. I think my top cover that all this is mounted onto that has the two screws that hold it in, I think it's actually slightly warped out of shape because it doesn't quite sit flush. So I think the problem is it's actually slightly just a little bit out of shape. So not the end of the world, like I say. I found some extra screws so if you get that just find some slightly longer fatter screws you'll be fine but with that that is us done for this video i have to say i know i've kind of you know had a bit of a gripe about some of the issues at the start of this video and it sounds like i'm ragging on this because it's like oh it's not as good as a fan home or a diagostini one i have to say though i am actually enjoying the building process on this the, the putting the bits together and the way they go together it's not quite as slick as the diag part work it's probably a bit older than some of them but it's not quite as slick, you know, in the production quality, but I am kind of enjoying it. I found the engine building process completely mesmerizing. I was just building away quite happily, listening to my podcasts and just in a different world. Same with setting all the radio trips. So I am actually enjoying it. It's not giving me any challenges that have put me off it so far. It's had a few, you know, niggles, but nothing major and nothing that's making me say, don't bother with this. I know this is, I'm saying this knowing what's coming in the future. I know all about the wiring in the cockpit. I know all about some of the other issues later on. I've never built this before, but I've seen other people do it. So trust me, I'm, I'm nervous about some of the things that are to come. We'll see how it, I'm no good at wiring, so we'll see how good it goes. But yes, I am thoroughly enjoying it so far. It's not quite as relaxed as the GT40 because that is real baby's first part work. It's not quite as stressful as the Dodge Charger was because some of the stuff in the chassis and that was quite stressful and quite, oh, but I'm really enjoying this so far. So I do recommend it. Up at this point, obviously, 20 issues from now, 50 issues from now, we'll see. But I do recommend it. It's good fun so far. But again, I do have to say a massive, massive thank you to the guys at Fan Home for providing me this free of charge. I really appreciate it. Uh, they're awesome folks. If you want this, there is a link in the description below the video. Don't forget, of course, if you want to help support this channel, you can do. You can go to patreon.com slash modelmakingguru and become a patron. Or you can press the join button uh, underneath any of my video content to become a member and you can support the channel that way or if any, if not anything else just make sure to like and subscribe a big massive thank you to everybody for watching this i'll appreciate it's not the usual format but we'll get back to that next time with just the next pack that comes in back to the the buildy buildy unless it's something really fiddly in which case i won't film it because it's too embarrassing anyway that's gonna do me so shut up fox let the good people go and have their dinner thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves go make something awesome Go be awesome, and until next time, adios amoebas. <laughs>